Oh, Five waste my money. Hey, hey, I'm fucking, fucking phone sex with you. So honey. Jeez. So honey. Now I'm on a hotline hey. over here. Hey. Lost in fucking hey. now. <laughs> I'm sick. Oh, you mean the ting when I get rid of something with my fingers? No, that's flick. I'm sick. Do you mean when I'm trying to shoot a basketball when it hits off the rim? Nah, that's a brick. <laughs> I'm sick. <laughs> oh, you mean when you're acting like an absolute knobhead? No, that's prick. <laughs> I'm sick. I'm neat. You mean the stuff that you do with your knife and fork? Nah, that's eat. I'm neat. You mean the thing that you take out the wrapper? No, that's sweet. I'm neat. Do you think, do you mean the thing you do with your chick in the bedroom? <laughs> nah, that's cheat. That's not what I was thinking. <laughs> Why was that the first thing that came? What are you saying? Beat, bro. Oh, beat! My <laughs> mum said cheat. <laughs> bro, I was looking at your face like... He <laughs> <You> didn't. <laughs> nah, so that's jokes. <laughs> I was thinking... Because I was thinking... Beat didn't even come close to my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking... The thing I do with my girl yeah. in the bedroom. So I was looking at your face like, are you sure? <laughs> but <laughs> let the cards land where they may, bro. Let's go. All right. Say less. That's hilarious. I'll, I'll, I'll slap that one. Do it for you. <laughs> oh, I'm hot. I'm hot as it is. Man said, no, that's cheat. <laughs> that's too funny. That's too funny. All right. I'm high. I think we did that one already. Yeah, we didn't get anywhere with it. Oh yeah, to be fair, we did. You panicked. Yeah. <laughs> That's jokes. Um, do you think? Do you mean that blue thing in the up there? Up there? Nah, that's the sky. I'm high. <laughs> oh, you mean the thing? The warm dessert with blueberries? No, that's pie. I'm high. Do you mean the thing you do when you're waving? Nah, that's goodbye. Okay. I'm high. So you're a double agent? No, my G, that's spy. I'm high. Do you mean when... Oh, I can't think, bro. I can't think, bro. Man, them are screaming at... Hi, Sky. Man, them are screaming words that rhyme. Screaming words that rhyme. It's just not coming to me. I'm vexed. It's cool, G. Do you want me to go by myself? Why are you pouring that? I'll go. So you think you're a double agent? Nah, that's spy. I'm high. What, the thing that you're tossing in the pan? Nah, that's fry. I'm high. Oh, when you think you're acting a little bit sneaky? Nah, that's sly. I'm high. <laughs> oh, when you say when the end is near? Nah, 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 that's nigh. I'm high. Oh, you were that annoying bug around the room? Nah, that's fly. I'm high. You're nervous to speak to people. Now that's shy. I'm high. Fair play. <laughs> Fair play. Fair fucking play. But that's a lie. Um, right. <clears throat> I'm a bed. Do you mean the thing that happens to your stomach when you're very full? Now that's fed. I'm a bed. You mean the thing that you push through the snow? My G, that's a sled. I'm bed. I'm a bed. Do you mean the thing that lives, lives, that's holding up your neck? That's holding up your neck. That's a head. Hmm. I'm a bed. Hmm. The wooden box in my back garden. <laughs> that's a shed. I'm a bed. Do you mean the thing? Oh, I can't think, bro. 
I can't think under pressure like this. <laughs> I can't think under pressure like this. Stop. <laughs> All right, fair play. Fuck me. That's hilarious. That got me sweaty, bro. That's hilarious. That's a good brain teaser, though. That's a good... I feel like doing stuff like that is a good icebreaker like, slash mm. a good brain exercise to, you know, get the juices flowing, get your yeah, blood pumping. Man. I like that. I enjoy that. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. We should do something like that. We'll, we'll do an impromptu. Yeah, improv. I'm just going to start an episode with it one time. <laughs> I panic. Oh, I know you I would. Panic and freeze. <laughs> Fam, I said, I can't think under pressure like this. <laughs> I can't think under pressure like this. Oh. I feel like there's a gun to my head. But I'm a bed. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious, bro. <laughs> Fuck me, that made me laugh. Oh, Jesus Christ. I think under pressure like this. <laughs> it was a lot. Fuck. <laughs> that reminds me of the time uh. <laughs> when we were in the car <clears throat> and I said, let's do some role play. I'm a random guest at a party and I ask you what your job is and you have to make it up on the spot. <laughs> yeah. And I gave you time to think. <laughs> and you were like, okay, go. And I was like, cool. What do you do for a living? You you froze. <laughs> you I said, I can't, I can't. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Through that, it was the funniest <laughs> thing. That was the funniest thing of all time. Right, let's try it now then, fuck it. Um, all right, cool. So we're at a party. We're at a dinner party. Wait. Oui. And you're, a, you're, a, you're an undercover agent. Okay. And you need to make up a job on the spot. Yeah. Of what you do. And I'm going to ask you questions about that job. And you need to answer me and, and make me believe that that's your job. Okay. Ready? Tell me when you're ready, Ashley. I'm not going to put pressure on you. Can I put a little, little peer pressure on you? What a rhythm. Are you ready? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. ready. <laughs> if you man don't know about Pretty Ricky. Pretty Ricky. Pretty Ricky, Ricky, Ricky in the back. <laughs> Bro, if I was an R&B singer, I would have been, been one of these, man. No <laughs> hug. Are you ready? Making love to the mic. Because I'm ready. <laughs> Can I put a little bit of pressure on you? Because <laughs> you know I want it. <laughs> and I need it. <laughs> Bro, Pleasure P was yeah, in he, it. Yeah, he he was made for Ricky. He 100%. He had to go solo. <laughs> These man were any leeches, you know. They couldn't string eight bars together. And they, they, were, they were making cake. Nah. Man said next verse after that was, what's your name, girl? Where what's you your, from? Like Are that? you alone? Can I come chill with you? I ain't a bugaboo. <laughs> I would say, unless it's too much, I'm going to bug it. Man stepping. <laughs> Yo. <coughs> Don't do that to oh, me. Oh, I ain't a bugaboo, but you're so fun. I had to bug it. <laughs> Man oh, said, no, what was his name? Blue Ivy or some shit? Oh, Blue Star. <laughs> Blue Star. <laughs> Blue Ivy. <laughs> Man was always had his breasts out. Uh, That's all he had going for him. Blue Star. I can't remember the other two. Spectacular. Spectacular. Spectacular was one of the like he had like dread, I say dread like plats, and there was one more I can't remember his name. Spectacular was the one that was beating that yeah in the elevator. Spectacular was the mess, was it, or was that the other one? Spectacular, always, no, Spec was the one that always had his top off, I believe. Oh, I believe Blue oh, Star yeah, was the sexy, main guy. Sexy Spec. Yeah, Blue Star <laughs> was the main first, like the one that always went first. Obviously, okay. Pleasure P was the singer. Spec was the one that always had his shirt off, and the third guy I can't remember. Oh, it's um, around, he used to say his name all the time. It's um, I'm I'm, I'm gonna have to Google it. I'm what never, was his name, bro? It was that. like um That's hilarious. That's fucking hilarious. Um why are they called Pretty Ricky? The bear with the dreads was an absolute state. <laughs> he looked like he was on crack always. <laughs> um Baby Blue? Yeah, yeah. Speck? Yeah. Slickem. Slickem Heim. Slick. <laughs> Slick him and play Slick him him. <laughs> he was a crackhead. He looked like he was. Um, he looked like Little Wayne and Flavor Flav had a you. That's that Slick him per- Heim. That makes per- man say Slick him Heim. Why do you keep saying the Heim? Bro, too, he bro. said it in a song. <laughs> no, he- Slick him Heim. That's what he used to say all the stop time. It, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> 
bro. Pretty That's Ricky. That's too funny. If you man are too young for Pretty Ricky, bro. Oh, Pretty Ricky were Invest the, yourself. Pretty Ricky were dope back in the day. Back in the day. Pretty Ricky, Ricky, Ricky in the back. <laughs> Sexy spec, you know. What a waste, man. Money, hey, hey, I'm, I'm a fucking phone sex with you. So honey. Jeez. So honey. Now I'm on a hotline over here. Hey. Lost in fuck hey. now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk <laughs> about sex, baby. Let's talk about sex, baby. What a tune. Bro, what a tune. Banger. What a tune. Bang, someone needs to bring back Pretty Ricky. Ooh, late Night Special, that was the album. That was an oh, album. Late Night Special. What an album. What an album. 2006, 2005. Mm. No, 2007, sorry. Sorry, it came out 2007. On the What a tune. That was a banger, fam. If you heard that Fuck. in the last 45 minutes of a club. In the dance. Woo! You best secure a wine. I was live. If that song came on and I had no one to wine, bro. I was so fucking uh, angry, bro. Banger. It made Banger. me feel like I should have asked the DJ, what's your set list, G? Yeah, because yeah, if, we're, so if any Pretty Ricky's heading up, I need to pattern someone early. Early, bro. Because if I ain't got a wine for, for a hotline, <laughs> then why am I here? Why am I here? What a tune. Oh. What a tune. Yo, you man, I know you man are young. If you appreciate <clears throat> R&B. Old school R&B. Old school R&B. Pretty oh. Ricky hotline, yeah? Oh. You're gonna wanna smash. Uh, you're going to you're wanna want to do smash. One of these ones. On the headline <laughs> in the morning, I'm yawning. I said I'm yawning. <laughs> Their bars oh, are so said, mediocre. Um, you what do you say? Man said put. <laughs> do you remember? <laughs> Take them granny patties off and put a thong on. <laughs> Getting granny pennies off and put a thought. The audacity. Yeah. Oh. Oh, man nah. said he's not willing to beat you naked. Bro. Take the granny panties off. Put the thong on. Put the then thong I'll on. You. Sexy spec was a chauvinist. Oh, way. bro. Wow, that's funny. <sighs> Getting granny panties off and put a thong <laughs> on. <laughs> what a tune. What a I tune. I love the sexy tone that make the dick long. <laughs> Yo, Pretty Ricky was it. They were on crud 24-7. They got too much Pum in they their did. heyday. They did. In they their heyday, yeah. they, they got too much pum. Thrown at them. That's Thrown what. Thrown at them. Slickerman was banging one yacht in an elevator. Did you see that? No. Nah. He recorded himself back shotting someone in an elevator mm. one time. It went on World Star or something. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, may yeah, have yeah. seen that at the time, but I don't All you recall. see is my man piping her. It I looks just like any amateur porn. Yeah, yeah. Banging her in yeah, an elevator, yeah, back yeah, shot. Yeah. And then he looks up at the mirror and just kinning teeth. <laughs> the shade's still on. <laughs> Looks up in the mirror, in the, in the elevator mirror, just course the smiling. <laughs> that probably ended the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, that's hilarious. You can't be banging yats on camera, bro. Shade's still on, you know. That's oh, hilarious. pretty Ricky. Oh. They fell into money. I don't know who funded them, but literally, <clears throat> someone must have caught Pleasure P singing at a wedding or something. Yeah. <laughs> and said, I have to sign you. Yeah. Man said, it's, it's me and the gang or it's no one. No one. one. <laughs> <laughs> then three years in, fam, he had had enough of their shit. Oh, and he went solo. He, fam, he must have had so many people telling him, like, Big why man. are you in this group? <laughs> it's like, <clears throat> man that used to go to X Factor, mm. and then Simon would be like, you're sick, you, you man, man are trash. trash. Yeah, yeah, if you yeah, want to yeah. make it in this competition, you need to ditch them lot. And they come backstage like, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, you know what to do. You know what it's you're doing. It's just a tough choice. Fam, There's when Simon difference. says ditch them, man, ditch, ditch them, man. Ditch them, man. Cal knows best. Bro... <laughs> And then they never even made it to judges' houses. Bro. It was lived, they were livid. <laughs> they, they burnt all their bridges and they didn't, didn't even make it, it to judges', judges houses. houses. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Bro, X Factor was savage. Oh my goodness, that's hilarious. Um but that yeah, is hilarious. Yeah, someone told uh, the, <sighs> Pleasure B must have had man on man on man saying, Why are you in this group, Playboy? Yeah. Well, it doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you actually doing? Fuck me, that's hilarious. <clears throat> that is hilarious. I'm so glad we went down. I didn't even know. How did the pleasure even come about? What were you singing? How, what? Peer pressure. Can because you were thinking about the thing. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you must say it was this. <laughs> that's too funny, bro. bro. All yeah. up, lips it up. The mic, like, can I mean, 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 I
Bro, when we do our first live show, man will be like, yeah, 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 where SG at? And it's just going to be a spot spotlight. me. Can I man in the question? If I'm seven minutes in, these men are going to be confused. <laughs> it's going to be all laughs. <laughs> and then the laughs died out, and I'm just in my, my zone. zone, bro. Everyone's I'm just going. Looking. Everyone's coughing like, <laughs> yeah. What's going on? What is going on? When does the joke end? And I'm just there, like, in it. <laughs> D'Angelo. <laughs> Having your way. And then you have to take a breath. And if you want, you're going to decide. <laughs> Lick your lips. And if you're happy, I can provide. Oh, my days. Just going on and on and on and oh on. my days, bro. bro. Someone will bottle me. <laughs> so where the fuck is Fuhad? What is going on? <laughs> I'd take it to the point. Where the fuck is Fuhad? I'd take it to the point where these men are so confused. Livid. Livid and confused, bro. And just as they're about to walk out, I'm. (laughs) Hey, it's all a joke, guys. I was only playing, all right? (laughs) We're here, we're here, we're here. Um, But yeah, all right. Back in the zone. But yeah, man. Dinner party. (laughs) Secret agent. Wow, I'm hot. You need to. uh, Sell me on your, your employment. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. I'm going to start asking questions. Yeah, you're going to be plucking holes out my mm. team. Say less, say less, say less. All right, let me know when you're ready. Ready. I've not got anything in my head, but I'm ready. All right. <clears throat> um, What's going on, bro? You good? I'm good, bro. What are you saying? Chilling, G. Chilling, yeah, man. man. Yeah, man. I yeah, hate man. all this schmoozy, boozy shit. What do you mean? Just these dinner parties, man. This like mm. networking shit. I'm just not uh, about it, man. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, I, know, I, know, I, know. I don't. I don't. I hate networking. I hate the term networking. I hate the concept. I hate the fact that you have to like. It's not who you know. It's it's not what you what know. It's who, who you know. know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a bro. I, I work you. hard, man. Hey, what do you, you do? me? What do I do? Mm. I'm an accountant, G. Okay. Okay. Mm. For who? For who? Mm. Um, J M Lewis. J M Lewis. Okay. Yeah, J M Lewis and Partners. Okay. Okay. How long you been there? Bro, I started there. Mm. James Lewis. Mm, so you're the you're the James himself. Yeah, managing D, managing director. <laughs> nice to meet you, Broski. Uh, yeah, nice yeah, to yeah. meet you, you man. Too, bro, what do you do? Oh, uh, I'm an affiliate, bro. An affiliate. An affiliate, bro. What does that? Mean? Let me breathe, man. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> hang on, hang on. Right. I'm not going to lie to you. That's the first thing that came to my head, bro. Fam, what? What the fuck does that mean? Do you, do you know what? Do you know why I'm so annoyed? Why? You know I'm so annoyed? Why? Because I don't know why I asked you what you do. Because when you, when you were going to ask me, I was going to say an accountant. Oh, really? Mother's life. That's the first I, I, thing. I like, stole it from you. You stole it from me? So the next A was affiliate. <laughs> and I don't even know what it means, big man. <laughs> what am I affiliated with? Drugs? Gangs? Rock and roll? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, James. James, I don't know. Oh, I'm sweating uncontrollably god. and I don't know what I'm affiliated oh, with. Oh, my god. Oh, my god. I'm not here for improv. Oh, my god. <laughs> You're the funniest person I've ever met. <laughs> I'm sweating uncontrollably. <laughs> Same, fam. <gasps> oh. <laughs> yo, yo, stop. All right, let me breathe, man. Let's move the fuck on, bro. Let's move the fuck on. Oh, Jesus <sighs> Christ. <sighs> I'm sweating. <sighs> Guys, like, Where's subscribe, comment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> make some friends in the comments, please. Build relationship, bonds, foundations. I'm sure we've been chatting for half an hour. Fam, already. we've been in it. <clears throat> uh, Patreon. Oh my goodness. Fuck me. Oh my goodness. Guys, if you're not on Patreon, you're missing, you're missing out on 50% of the content. Oh my goodness. Get on over to Patreon episodes every single Thursday. Every Thursday oh without fail. Head on over to Patreon. 
Patreon.com forward slash shits, shits and, and gigs. gigs. We love you guys. <clears throat> oh my goodness. And without further ado, we got Fu has fun facts. Right. Oh, Jesus. Oh Christ. my stomach. Man said I'm an affiliate. Cause... <laughs> what does that even mean, man? What does that even mean, James? <laughs> oh, it's... oh my god. Oh my god. I I can't comprehend how confused I was when you said that. I thought, raw. He's going in. He's trying to throw me way off the scent. Curveballs, bro. Way off the scent. Oh my God. I couldn't <laughs> even finish my sentence and asking you, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I was going to, uh, mother's life, I was going to say an account. I'm sorry, bro. I was going to say an account and you stole it. I'm I was like, sorry, fuck. bro. I had I'm nothing sorry. left. I hate how good I am at lying. <laughs> That's what annoys me as well. I must say, J.M. Lewis. I'm James Lewis. <laughs> Who? Man said, you're the James Lewis from the accounting firm. <laughs> the world-renowned accounting firm. Oh, oh my goodness. That's too funny, man. Woo! Right. The fun fact of the day is, on um, November 8th, 2017, a young Chinese man named Wu Yong Ning tried to, pull off, tried to do pull-ups on the side of a 62-story building and it was the last decision he ever made. So... He was an internet um, st- uh, terrifying stuntman. So he climbed up a building and he was meant to, like I said, he was meant to be doing pull-ups on it. And he gained millions of followers and blah, 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 blah. By the time of his death, he had 62, he had 300,000 followers. Okay. But when he fell from a, he fell from a 62 story skyscraper in China. But he didn't drop immediately like to the ground. He apparently landed on like a terrace or something, but he was meant to propose to his wife. I think a week later. So it was raising funds. That's the reason why I was doing all these stunts. Wow. He was raising funds. <clears throat> for an engagement ring. For an engagement ring to propose to his wife like the week after. And his wife confirmed that he had passed away. Which is, was in 2017. So yeah, it was a stuntman who rose to fame by scaling scaling places and doing um, stunts and stuff. Yeah. And that was the last thing he ever did in The thing is, I hate that it had to be him. Bro. But someone needed to die from all this shit. For someone to realise that like, this ain't this the way to go. It, yeah, bro. this ain't it. When I'm on Instagram and shit and these men are, are hanging off cliffs, doing all this foolishness. No, man. Stop, Stop, fam. And the thing is, it's so popular now that you ain't even going to get famous from it. Bro? I don't even... Fam, when I see the videos, I don't even check to see who the guy doing it is. Mm. I don't even check to see who that guy is. I just move the fuck on with my life. I kiss my teeth and I scroll up. I said, these men are foolish. Mm. I don't even think that the person, Searching. it doesn't even cross my mind that the person that's doing it is a, is a guy that does this. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. look at it and think, fucking hell. And then just scroll up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this needs to stop. It does need For to one, stop. it's a saturated market. <laughs> and for two, we didn't even check for you. We scroll up. Mm. So if, you, <laughs> if you're a stunt guy and you're, you're looking for fame, bro, pick another, pick something else. Yeah, man. Because it's... it ain't worth it, man. Hi. <clears throat> High risk, high reward, but it's high risk, bro. Fam. There's more risk than there is reward. Have you seen the man that climb up those towers? You know the ones with like... Minimal the... tilt. Uh, nah, 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 nah. Not them ones. Like it's like, a, 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 not even a tower. Like it looks like a fucking, like a radio fucking thing. Okay. And it's got like an antenna at the top. Okay. And they're like hanging off the antenna and they're looking down and you think, how did you even get up there? I'm not. No. It's not even like a building you can climb up. Oh, It's man. like a fucking... Like I don't a, even like know what Eiffel Tower esque looking type Yeah, thing. one of them okay. looking things, but like mm-hmm, real skinny. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know um, what you mean. Bro, I see them and I'm like, what are you thinking? Mm-hmm. What are you actually thinking? Speaking of, did you see that right? There was a random TikTok going around the other day. One guy that nearly got struck by lightning in a swimming pool. Did you see it? No. Fam. There's a guy filming himself. It's pouring down with rain. Pouring down mm. with rain. And he's got a pool in his back garden. Mm. And he goes with his um, like GoPro or something. And he's like, bro, I love swimming when it's, when it's this kind of weather. And he jumps off <clears throat> and he's about... The, the thingy. Jumps off the ledge, the ledge to yeah. jump into the pool. Mm. And as he's in the air, lightning strikes his swimming pool and then he lands. No fucking way. Swear to God. Man would have... He would have died immediately. He would have died immediately. Oh my god! He's this close to jumping in, the, like getting in the pool. He's like here, bro. I'm surprised he didn't send that. To and me. then you and you see, you go, and then it's just he jumps, he falls in. To be fair, I, I see so much shocking shit yeah, on I know, TikTok. I, I don't know what to send. 
<laughs> that reminds me of, um, there was a TikTok. Um, it was a guy that was doing, he's a fan of Naruto. And he was doing like a Chidori, like sign thing. And it was raining outside, but he was just recording himself. There. Obviously the background music's there, but it was raining outside. But as soon as he did it, lightning struck. Wow. And he looks back like, oh my God, this is fucking sick, bro. <laughs> That is sick. Like, like, what are the odds? And it looks incredible. That sounds sick. It looks sick. fucking incredible. That sounds sick. There's a girl that does hand signs. Have you seen it? Maybe, but I've probably... Like an Asian girl. Mm. She does it like she gets in like full makeup and mm-hmm. there's like a split screen of like her. There's like her here in like a black room mm. and she's just doing it. Mm. And then she'll pull up like different Naruto scenes, mm. like rotating through. And one would be like Kakashi versus Zabuza. Mm. And then there'll be like Sasuke doing some shit. Mm. And even when, um, do you remember when Sasuke was using Naruto to do sync, like his hand signs? I don't remember. No. He was like beefing Naruto. Okay. And then he'd like grab his arm and then do like a hand sign and then beef him again and then do like another one. It was sick. She was even doing like single handed ones, bro. She's sick. Them things there are just they're fam, too gang. They're fam, too gang. This thing is the just these are too gang, I'm bro. Just, it's too live. <sighs> Fuck. It's sick. Naruto it's is staple. Staple anime. I hate the fact that it doesn't get it obviously gets the credit. It's top it three. Yeah. It gets a lot of credit. But true, true anime fans are like, oh, it's too commercial. Do you know what I mean? It's too commercial. Like, they don't check for them once, mm. which I can understand. Mm. But when you, it's actually unbelievably good. It's stable, It's as famous bro. as it is because it's so good, Of course. Bro. Once we start entering, like, the Akatsuki bits, you're like, this show is, is, the, is the one, it's bro. It's insane. It gets it's dark. It's insane, It gets bro. dark, bro. Naruto's the one, man. I'm so happy I, I jumped on when I jumped on. Same, G. Fuck. Even early days when um, around the time where Sasuke versus like Orochimaru, when he gets his first curse mark in the trees, in the tuning in exams, and he un- he's just recently unlocked his um, Sharingan. I think this is when he gets his second, uh, like, second circle. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he gets the first one in like the tuning exams early days. Mm. And he gets the second one because he, then he's copying Rock Lee because Rock Lee mm. challenges him, innit? And Rock Lee tries the Lotus thing. And then he clocks it. And then when he's scrapping, he does the Lotus he does thing. does the Lotus thing, yeah, yeah, Mad. yeah, 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 yeah. And not yeah, yeah. like, now, what the fuck? How? 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 Literally how? Um, but then when he's fighting Orochimaru in the forest, he gets his second one, I'm sure. Orochimaru. And he's putting, ar- he's putting arms on Orochimaru. Yeah, 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 he's yeah. doing all the fire jutsu. Mad. And they changed, you know what's going off when they changed the animation style? Bros. When they, one, when they change the animation style and two, when they change the opening credits music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time they change the music, I'm thinking something's popping off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have, We've made a development. We've made, fam, you, and you have to watch the opening credits and you have to watch the closing credits because you have to see- It what, tells you tales. It tells you tales, bro. You see different powers, you see different characters. You think, Yeah, bro. This is, this is where I'm up to in, um, remember I told you My Hero in the previous episode or episode before, My Hero- um, it's part one, part two type thing. So I'm on a part two now. So the music's changed. Where am I? You're not there yet. So And it's just, you just know it's going to pop second season. Second half of this season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to pop, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry, guys. I know you guys don't, I know like some of you guys 87% don't, of you don't watch anime. Don't fuck with anime. <laughs> but clearly we do. Hence the reason why we talk about it quite often. But you guys need, I was in your shoes, guys. The guys that don't watch anime, the 87% of you that don't watch anime, I was in your shoes 11, 12 years ago, bro. Trust me, just watch one, watch the trailer, watch the first episode of Death Note and then come chat to me. Tell yeah, me I'm bro. wrong. Yeah, bro. Tell me it's not fucking addictive. Yeah, bro, it's unreal. Because that's how I got Bella into um, anime. Bella never used to watch anime. Bella watched one episode of anime, one episode of Death Note, rap. She's now watching Hunter x Hunter. She was watching Baruto when I used to watch Baruto. She was watching... Um, she watched a couple of episodes of My Hero. She watched a couple of episodes of... She watched Vinland Saga through and through with me. Vinland Saga, sick! She watched first, first lockdown. She watched the whole Vinland Saga Gang. with me. Thorin and them man there. I was going to say, you never even spoke to me about Vinland oh, Saga. I, I, I'm surprised I didn't. At the time, I'm surprised I'm, I didn't. I was preaching it for time. Yeah. So I'm surprised you've watched the whole thing and didn't even tell me you I'm watched surpri- it. I'm surprised I did it. Because the thing is, I can't remember you preaching it to me, but I'm sure you were the one that recommended it to me. Oh, 100%, yeah. You I recommended, recommended it to you when I was like one episode in. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then I, I saw it on comments on our um, YouTube. Um, recommendations. Re- YouTube stuff, yeah, recommendations, yeah, yeah. blah, blah. So we watched it during lockdown. And bro, who is, what's the prayer's name that actually um, Doppy Thor, Thorfinn's dad? 
What's his name? Oh, I can't remember. I haven't watched it in ages. Because I can't remember his name. Because he is arms. Yeah, he yeah. has values. Yeah, as yeah. much as as much as he was like the antagonist of the show, are uh, his core values, bro? This is one this is one of the main reasons why I love anime. It teaches you so much stuff about life. Bro. And people don't understand because it's animated, they think, oh, it's childish. But if you actually deep what they say and how they actually put pieces together, it's, oh, it's, it unravels a new world. It changes the way you think about stuff. Yeah, man. And this is the reason why I love anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because yeah. It, it taps into things that you thought weren't possible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, bro. Oh, I bro. love anime. I that love anime. Um, but what you got for me today? Speaking of mm. anime, Japan, Tokyo Olympics. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anime, Japan, Tokyo <laughs> Olympics. There yeah, we're here. Um, obviously, I've been watching the Olympics. Mm. First of all, I'm pretty sure I'm one of three people watching the Olympics right <laughs> yeah, now. I'm, I'm not watching it at all. No one's watching it. Because it's like dickhead o'clock. No, it's not. Is it not? No, it's not. Is it not? Bro, BBC iPlayer. Mm. You go on free view on your TV. Mm. BBC iPlayer. It tells you what day they're on. Mm. They, 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 they patterning it for us this this time oh, is it? it's literally got day one day two day three you click on whatever day you want mm. and it tells you do you want to watch this event this event this event this, oh. event this event this event and if it's live it will say do you want to watch it live or do you want to start from the beginning okay bro you can watch whatever you want on because iPlayer more time, right now like obviously i do a lot of um late shifts so when i come home from work sometimes and i'm just chilling or whatever come home put the tv on it says olympics 2020 live and that's at like 2 a.m. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, okay, fair, fair play. But now they're, run, in Japan. they're running it all day, bro. Oh, snap. They start, because I was watching the skateboarding the other day. And the oh. Common, yeah, bro, they got first year they've ever got skateboarding in it. These men are coming off. It's already finished, but you can still watch it on day two. Okay. You've got an iPlayer live. Um, <clears throat> I was watching skateboarding and it was they were saying, oh, it's like 8 a.m. here in Tokyo. Mm. And I'm thinking, wow, you man are running at 8 a.m. <laughs> um, but they just run it all day, bro. But I yeah, skateboarding at 8 a.m., by the way. I've never had breakfast. Fam? I'm not had breakfast. Fam, when he said it's 8 a.m., that's exactly word for word what I said. I said, I'm not skateboarding at 8 a.m. If I'm a skateboarder, I want to live chill. Yeah. I'm not skateboarding at 8, 8 a.m. You can't make me. <laughs> if you want that gold bitch, Bro, you better. 8 a.m. <coughs> but um, basically, what I was going to say is, for one, I don't think anyone's watching the Olympics, which breaks my heart. No, it breaks my heart because, bro, I have been an advocate for the Olympics my same, whole life. Same, same, same. From when same, I was a same, little kid, same, same. I, I love the Olympics. obsessed with the Olympics. Sorry to cut you off. We will get back to your bat. But I think one of the main reasons why I'm not engulfed in it as much, I saw the opening ceremony or like maybe... So, an worst opening ceremony. Hour of it. But so because boring. there's no fans or there's no spectators... Bro, it takes everything away, it doesn't it? takes everything away from it. And it's like... So depressing. Damn, bro. Yeah, so depressing. Like, these shame. men are all coming out with their countries... And they're all like, ah, nah, nah. Uh, there's, there's, there's no, no one, one there, bro. It's bruv. a shame. Who are you man. waving at? It's a shame. It's a massive shame. It sucks. It's uh. because Tokyo is in like a uh, state of emergency right now. Oh, is it? Bro, apparently they did a survey and it's like 58% of Japanese people are opposed to the Olympics. So the majority of people in Japan want so the Olympics cancelled. Really? Just to because get over this COVID thing? They're, they're, they're suffering in Japan right now. Wow. Okay. They're I know nothing about that. They're suffering in okay. Japan right now. They're, they've got cases through the roof. Okay. So they're in a like, what they call a state of emergency okay. in Japan right now. And then the Olympics rolls through. There's 11,000 athletes in the Olympics. So there's 11,000 extra people from every country in the world in Tokyo right now, not including their coaches or their family, whoever else they brought out with them, mm. uh, physios, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Commentators, cameramen, all these people, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people, are all centralized in their capital city right now, whilst they're suffering like the most they've suffered with COVID. So I'm not surprised that people are like, are you joking? This can't damn, run. Damn, but that damn, aside, damn. <clears throat> I was watching the um, Naomi Osaka Docu series on Netflix. Okay, do you know who she is? Yeah, the tennis player. Of course, tennis yeah. player. She did the she did the fire thing. She for did the, the fire thing yeah, for the yeah, open yeah, ceremony. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's got a three part series on Netflix. Okay, banging. Okay, banging. And there's a few bits that stuck out. There's two bits that stuck out for me that are deep. And we've had a funny episode. And I don't want to kill the buzz, but I think it's interesting. I'm in. I'm. Ho I'm here for so, it. <clears throat> always. Um. So basically, you watch it and it talks about what a man said. Affiliate. I'm an affiliate. <laughs> I said, what am I, an affiliate for drugs, alcohol, rock and roll? 
That's too funny, Kira. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. That's too funny. I'm so sorry. Oh, Fuck. Man said bro at the end. I'm an affiliate, bro. <laughs> My head was doing loops. Like an Amazon affiliate? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Never me break the chair. <laughs> oh my days. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, the Naomi Osaka, Netflix, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so the first Fuck thing, me. which Fuck is me. dread as it's going through, because it's real time. Okay. Like the thing ends, the final episode is in 2021. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, <clears throat> it follows her through like her highs and lows and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and the first bit, there's two like really sad bits. The first one, obviously, so for context, if you don't know who Naomi Osaka is, she's a professional tennis player. She is half Japanese, half Haitian. Both her parents are immigrants from obviously their respective countries. And she and they moved to America when she was three. I think she was born in she was born in Japan and she moved to the US when she was three. Her and her sister. And they've what, li- what a mix, by the way. Haitian, Haitian and, Japanese. and Japanese, bro. Yeah, mad, mad. Fuck, I love shit like that. Yeah, though. same. Man. I love shit like that. So anyway, she's a professional tennis player. She's won the Australian Open and I think she's won the US Open twice now. I mm. think. I might be getting them mixed up. But she's top. Um, first time she won the US Open, she'd beaten... No. Australian Open or US Open, I can't remember. She beat Serena Williams for it. Mm-hmm. I remember that one. I can't remember which one it was, but I do remember that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That because was her Serena first Grand Slam win. her, blah, blah, blah. I remember, I remember. That was her first Grand Slam win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> anyway... It talks about kind of the pressures and stuff like that. 16 or 17 or something stupid like that as well. She was young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry to keep cutting you off, by the way. So um, it talks about that. And the first, and she had a really close relationship with Kobe Bryant. Okay. So she was really good friends with Kobe Bryant. Okay. And during the doggy series, it goes through Kobe Bryant's death. Okay. So this is peak. So basically her relationship with Kobe Bryant was basically him taking like a mentor role for her in just dealing with the pressures of being a superstar, basically mm-hmm. a young superstar mm-hmm. and what everything that comes with it, with that and how you can continue to perform at a high level with all this pressure. Mm-hmm. So that she would come to Kobe and say, Oh, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with this psychologically. Like, how do you deal with this? And how do you deal with this? Like, I'm, I want that Mamba mentality kind of thing. And he would obviously help. <clears throat> and when he died, she was broken for him. Mm. She lost tournaments when, when he died, mm. she was, she was broken and they interviewed her. And they asked her how she's feeling on the day, on the day that he died, they asked her, they interviewed her about it. Cause obviously everyone knew that she had a good relationship with him mm-hmm. and fam. Oh my God. It was so sad. It resonated with me in a way sometimes that I'll explain, but <clears throat> yeah, obviously the first point was Kobe. He died. And then they said to her, like, how are you feeling? And stuff like that. She was crying. And she said, I feel like I'm betraying his legacy and I okay. feel like a failure because he spends all his time, whenever I go to him for help, he spends so much time with me, coaching me through this. And I come to him and say, how do you deal with this psychologically? And how do you deal with that psychologically? Mm. And all of this stuff. And she's like, he tells me, but I'm so weak mentally that I don't implement it. I'm not Mm. mentally strong enough to take the advice he's given me and implementing it. Mm. I'm just weak. But I don't tell him that I'm not implementing it because I'm too embarrassed. Mm. And she just lost a match. Uh, I think she'd lost round one of the US Open. She just lost round one of the US Open. She was out mm. in either round one or round two, but she was still in the rounds. Mm. No quarterfinal semis, nothing. She was yeah, still in the yeah, six, yeah, round six, yeah, 16 right. rounds yeah. and she got kicked out and she typed a text to him to say, how do you deal with this kind of thing? And she said, the reason I lost... It's because I'm not taking the advice he's given me because I'm so mentally weak and I've just lost and I typed him a text asking how to deal with it, but I was too ashamed to send it because the whole reason I've lost is because I'm mentally weak yeah. because I don't have the Mamba mentality. Yeah. That's why I lost. Yeah. I lost because I'm not, <clears throat> I don't have Mamba mentality and that's why I'm lost. Yeah. So once I've lost, I typed him a text, but I was too embarrassed to send it. Yeah. So I never sent it. Mm. And now he's dead and I will never speak to him again. I will never get any advice from him again. And he could, this is the lowest point in my career. And I was too embarrassed to contact my friend. And now I'll never speak to him again. 
and I'll never be able to press send. I'll ne- that text was still typed and I'll never be able to press send. Bro, I wanted to cry for her. I actually wanted to cry for her because especially when she said I was embarrassed because he's given me all this advice and I'm not yeah. implementing it. Yeah. I felt it resonated with me <clears throat> in a way because I don't ask people for advice. They give it to me and then I don't implement it. Mm. But I, a lot of the time I act just taking a dark turn, not dark turn, but like a serious turn. Obviously I act so positive all the time mm-hmm. that certain people relate that to me. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Some, sense, certain people think like <clears throat> when they're feeling down, yeah. they turn to me Makes sense. and they're struggling with like our friends. Obviously we have friends that want, are trying to achieve certain things. Mm-hmm. And I have friends that aren't in our immediate circle that mm-hmm. are trying to achieve certain things. Mm-hmm. And not that we've achieved anything really, but they, look at what we're doing and they'll contact me and say, bro, I want to do this. I want to do that. And I'm struggling with this and that. Mm. And I'll hit him up and just be like, bro, I won't say obviously mamba mentality, but I'm like, bro, it's all about men. It's all about where your head's at. Like granted, you don't want to do it sometimes. You don't want to do it, but you just got to wake up, fucking open your laptop and start doing it. And once you start doing it, just keep doing it. Once you keep doing it, you just do it and do it and do it. And don't stop doing it. I've got the itchiest nose. Fucking hell. Fuck me. Sorry. Sorry but once you just do it, you just keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. And before you know it, you're done. And before you know, if you keep doing it, you'll get yourself in a position where you have to do it. Mm. That's like where, we're, where we're at now. Mm. We have to do it. We don't have a choice anymore. Yeah, yeah, so now yeah, I don't yeah. need motivation to do it because yeah. I ain't got a choice. Mm, yeah. Just like work. Mm. You make it your work. And once it's your work, because you're not motivated to go out to work every day, but you mm. do it anyway. You've got no choice. So you put yourself in a position where motivation isn't a factor anymore. Mm. And that's when you'll succeed. Mm. And I'll chat all this. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm working to quit my job. Yeah, I'm working to quit my job. Grinding, grinding, grinding. Yes, quit my job. Da, 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 da. All these congratulations messages. Like, mm. well done, well done, well done, well done, well done. And it's like, I'm too embarrassed to tell them sometimes that I wake up so depressed that I can't even bear to open my laptop. Mm. I can't physically bear it. Mm. And I do it. Mm. But like, I'm ashamed because I'm not motivated to do it. And like stuff like gym, like all this stuff like we're talking about, like tighten up, tighten up, summer edition, like summer merch, all this stuff. Bro, sometimes I'm just like, man, fuck the gym. I'm not going. And I sit there. Everyone gets like that. Exactly. Everyone does that. that, But they turn to me to be the guy because I don't do that. Yeah. And sometimes I do do it. Mm. But I'm too ashamed to tell them that Bro, yesterday I didn't go. Yeah, I'm a human being as I'm well. I'm a human being. Yesterday I didn't fucking go. Mm. And I'm ashamed of it. And today I'm going, but I don't tell them that mm. because I don't want to demotivate them more. Yeah. And when she was saying all that stuff, I was like, fuck, that fucking resonates. Even though it's different, mm. it fucking resonates. Okay. Because she was so embarrassed saying, oh, help me, help me, help me. Oh, his help, his help, his help. She's like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Then she wins a couple more ta- tournaments and she's like, Mamba mentality. When really, it's all fake. Mm. It's all fake because behind closed doors, she's just as insecure as she was in the first place. Mm. And then she was so embarrassed to turn to him because this was the point where she, she knew that he knew you ain't Mamba shit. Mm. Like, but obviously he wouldn't have said that. Yeah, he would have still been there for yeah, her. Yeah, of course. He would have ridden in her corner for sure. Yeah, and he could have possibly shared moments like what you think is Mamba mentality all the time. Mm. I'm full of shit. Mm. Amount of times I cried myself to sleep, bro. I mean, Amount of times I thought I wasn't good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amount of times, like, I, w- I told everyone I trained until six in the morning. I did, did I fuck? I mean, I slept until six and oh. I woke up and started training, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. everyone's human. And then she, that's it. The person that she <clears throat> turned to for that is gone now. Yeah. Gone. Gone. Done. And I was like, fuck, that's deep. That's fuck, tough. that's deep. She that's must tough. have been hurting. Yeah, man. I think there's so many people were hurting, bro. Bro, hurting. Every, the whole world was hurting. The whole world. Fam, it was what, January, February times? Oh, I can't it's remember. over a year, a year and a half yeah. now. That's flown by. Because I, the thing is, I remember exactly where I was when I found out. Me too. I was in the office at work and one of my colleagues came in. His name's Jordan. And he was like, oh, have you heard? He said it so casually. He's like, oh, have you heard? Oh, um, Kobe Bryant's dead. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, he died in a helicopter crash. I was like, what? I sat up. I was like, what? And because... It's such a random way to die it, as well. Not even that. It was just... I'm, I'm not like... 
I watch and s- somewhat follow basketball, but I've never been a hardcore baller fan, you know? Mm-hmm. But when it's someone like Kobe, even if you don't watch football, if David Beckham died, it's got to mean something yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah, Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 so it's yeah. like, how can you just come in and say that nonchalantly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, that's the reason why I remember exactly where I was and how it was said and like, Bro, what do you realize what you're saying to me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know? Bro, I was in the office just chilling. I think I was on my lunch break, bro. Bro, it was Kobe Bryant's death is the first time where I actually understood how the generation above why the generation above us acts mm. when they hear like George Michael died. Mm. And they're like, what are you on about? That makes perfect sense. And I'm sitting here thinking, I don't give, give a, a fuck. fuck about George Michael. No Granted, offense, I know, yeah, 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 I, I know who you're talking about. Even when yeah, Michael yeah, Jackson yeah. died, yeah. I wasn't like, what? Mm, I was like, mm. oh, I swear, that's yeah, dread. Yeah. But the whole world was like, are you crazy? What do you mean Michael Jackson died? Fam, when Kobe died, I was like, what the fuck are you saying to me? I could have mm. cried. Mm. And I don't know why I felt that mm. way. But then I started thinking back. And I remember there's a specific memory that stuck out to me. I used to love Kobe Bryant, bro. Mm. I was obsessed with Kobe Bryant I when I was a t- kid. You, you told me before, especially in uni if you told me. Bro, sure. I was obsessed with Kobe Bryant. And I remember for one of my birthdays one year, my mum said, oh, what do you want for... No, Christmas. Mm. It was Christmas. What do you want for Christmas? Mm. And in JD Sport, mm. this is when it ba- used to be called JD Sport, before it was just JD. J- <laughs> in JD Sport, my guy, they were running these NBA jeans, bro. Jeans. This is how much I love Kobe. Like, I was so obsessed with basketball, I used to dress like an American. Mm. When all my boys were out here playing football, football and it. they're wearing Astro their fucking and vapors and their total 90s mm. and just fucking shorts or trackies tucked into their socks yeah, yeah, and all yeah. them things. I was out here wearing Jordans, mm. baggy jeans, like fucking NBA jerseys. Like, I would dress like an American. I didn't give a fuck mm. what any of my friends said. Yeah. I was obsessed with basketball. Yeah. I was obsessed with Kobe Bryant. Mm. Obsessed. Mm. And they had these NBA jeans. So it was just like blue jeans or black jeans or whatever. And it would have um, a jersey patch. So the number on the jean, like sewed into the jean. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And they had Kobe Bryant once. Uh. And it was uh, eight. uh, Lakers, LA Lakers number eight on there. Uh. And I saw them one day. It was like in November. And I was like, oh my fucking God. And obviously I've told you, my mom never used to buy me shit. Shit, So I saw them. I was like, oh my God, I could cry. I need those jeans, bro. Mm. Before that... There wasn't anything clothing wise or anything that I needed. Mm. And I was like, mum, I have to have those jeans, bro. Mm. I fucking have to. Obviously my mum brushed it. I was like, you know, I'm not buying them. They were like 50 quid. Mm. Back then that was 300 quid. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was like, mum, please. I have to, I need those, mum. Like I was close to tears. Like, mum, please. I need the Kobe Bryant jeans. And um, she was like, no, 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 I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that. And I was like, fuck. And then obviously a month later, she's like, oh, what do you want for Christmas? And I said, mum, please, I don't care anything i don't care about what else you get me please in jd those blue um kobe bryant jeans mm. i have to have them mm. she was like bet i'm so excited bro so excited christmas day comes my mom passes me the present i can feel his clothing i could have squealed from tore it open yeah tore it open <laughs> yeah. the things went everywhere <laughs> yeah i look inside Alan Iverson, black, 76ers jeans. I swear to God, if I had a match in my hand, I would have dropped it on those jeans. And I would have dropped it on my mum. <laughs> Do you know the fucking thing? Parents don't listen sometimes. <laughs> Parents just don't listen. They think that when a child wants something specific, a substitute is okay. As long as it's like it. Are you crazy? Bro. Parents are crazy. Alan Iverson, 76ers jeans. Number three. Yeah, yeah, same thing, same thing. Yeah, box that, box that, box that. My son will appreciate that anyway. Bro. I said I could have set a match to it and my mum too. <laughs> bro, I was so upset. Oh, I can imagine, Worst brother. Christmas ever. I can imagine. And I was like, oh. and I knew there was no way I could say to my mum, because if I would have said to my mum, mum, what the fuck? I asked for the Lakers. She would have smacked me across my face. Before you finish the sentence. Bro, on Christmas Day. Before you finish the sentence. If I'm picking up chest on Christmas Day, I would have had nothing. You have to be grateful. You wouldn't have had dinner that day. Bro, you have to be grateful. You can't run up here talking about what's this. So I had to be like, oh. And I think she said, oh, they didn't have the ones you wanted. So I got these. I think that's what she said. But I was just like, I don't want to. In my head, I was like, I'm going to kill myself. Did you ever wear them? Oh yeah, I wore them out. 
Okay. I wore them, wore them, wore them. Yeah, I, yeah. I had to. Um, but I was. I remember being so upset. Uh, I literally uh, felt like I betrayed Kobe Bryant. Uh, sorry, broski. I literally felt like I betrayed him. I was obsessed with Kobe Bryant. I was obsessed with Kobe Bryant. Can I ask you a question? Go. Okay. Um, this basketball related, obviously. Um, first question before I go to my follow-up question. Do you mind me baiting out your surname on this? My surname? Yeah. Of course not. Okay. Now I can follow up. Now I can ask the follow-up question. So I already feel like I know what you're going to ask me and I already have an answer for you, but go on. Okay, perfect then. So remember back in the day, I say back in the day, but a few episodes ago, probably 10, 20 episodes ago, you were talking about uh, Midnight Madness and how you can meet, how you almost met, or you had the potential to meet um, LeBron, LeBron James. James. Yeah. How your goal was to be in the NBA. Blah, 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 blah. Did it ever cross your mind that people would think that you may be related to Tim? Um, yes. So much so that when I was a kid, when I said I already have an answer for you, yeah. when you said surname, yeah. I used to tell everyone Tim Duncan was my uncle. Mm. I used to lie to everyone and say Tim Duncan's my uncle. Because okay. in England, yeah. if you're not a basketball fan, you ain't got a fucking clue who Tim Duncan is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you ain't yeah, got yeah, a yeah, clue yeah, who yeah, Tim Duncan yeah, yeah. is. He's played for San Antonio Spurs, right? Yeah, Spurs. San Antonio Spurs, yeah, yeah. So in school, I knew for a fact, no one knew who Tim, uh, Tim Duncan was. Uh. So when people used to talk about basketball this, and basketball mm. that, I say, yeah, 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 yeah. Bro, and they'd be like, oh, why are you so into basketball? Why do you love basketball so much? Mm. And I was like, bro, I'm going to the NBA like my uncle. I used to finesse the whole thing. Bro, I'm going to the NBA just like my uncle. And they'd be like, uncle who? Uncle and Tim. And I was like, my uncle Tim, bro. What are you talking about? And he's light-skinned as well. <laughs> so no one, this is when I was like, year eight. Yeah, yeah. No one was smart enough already. to think. You're just yeah. there. No one was smart enough to think, but your dad's dark-skinned. Yeah. And that's supposed to be his brother. I don't think so. But I'm like, you know, all I thought is I'm light skinned, yeah. Tim Duncan's light skinned. That's good. It patterns. And the face shape, everything, you can, if if you needed to believe if it, push you could believe to shove, it. Bro, it's believable. I used to tell everyone, yeah, That's Tim Duncan's my uncle. That's hilarious. Tim Duncan's my uncle. And they were like, nah, it's not. I was like, big man, Google him. Tim Duncan's my uncle. I said, you take one look at him and you'll believe me. And they were like, nah, they're typing Tim Duncan. They're like, oh shit. Is that your uncle? I was like, bro, it's my uncle. For years. For years, bro. I thought about. I think I thought about that question after we spoke about that midnight madness thing, but it never came to mind again. Until yeah, now. bro. For years, I used to say that. So as soon as you said, "Do you mind people knowing your surname?" I was like, "I already know what you're gonna say," <laughs> okay, and bro. I've already got the answer. <laughs> for years, I told that lie. That is hilarious. And the thing is, I didn't even check for Tim Duncan like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah, even yeah, check yeah, yeah. for him. He was just a name. He was a known name. He was a baller, but yeah, he's yeah. a centre. I yeah, yeah. can't relate to him. Yeah, yeah, I, I ain't got that mean. height. <laughs> he was tall, bro. Tall, tall. Um, anyway, sorry. The uh, Naomi Osaka thing. Yes, I, forgot, I completely forgot what we're talking about. Same. That. So Naomi, so that was the first bit yes. that cut me. Yes. The Kobe bit. The second part. Yeah. She, um, second part was, oh, that was it, about the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So her whole career... She said, I want to be the first Asian woman to win a Grand Slam. Okay. So whenever she comes out, obviously they say where you're from. Yeah. Even though she is American, technically, yeah. she represents Japan. Okay. She okay. always has. Okay. Always. Okay. So just like Djokovic, Slovenia, whatever. Uh, Slovenia, Slovakia, I can't remember. I think, is it Slovakia? Djokovic, I can't remember. But anyway, whoever comes out says where you're from. Mm. No matter what Grand Slam. Hers never says USA. Okay. It always says Japan. It always has. So come uh, push comes to shove. Now, obviously, she's like top ranked in the world yeah. at this point. And then uh, Olympics come around and everyone was asking her, who are you going to rep? Who are you going to rep? USA yeah. or um, Japan? Japan. And um, Peak how Haitia doesn't even get a... Haiti rather doesn't Haiti get Haiti doesn't a, get a look in, bro. A look they in. would die to have her. Oh, imagine she represented Haiti. Wow. Yeah, but anyway, continue. So said Japan or um, USA, which it was going to be. And at the time, she was um, doing a lot of uh, of the BLM protests. Okay. This is during BLM times. Okay. And um, she was repping a lot. And she even dropped out <clears throat> of a tournament one time. She just made it to the semi. She had a semi-finals match. Okay. In a grand, I think it was a Grand Slam tournament. Uh, no, it wasn't a Grand Slam tournament. It was a big tournament. It wasn't a Grand it Slam. It was a Grand Slam. Okay. Um, and she, she said, I'm not playing. Mm. Um, just to draw attention and she had all these masks with like um, like George Floyd Breonna mm. Taylor all them um, <clears throat> and then when it came out that um, 
she, and then they said, oh, Olympics, Wagwan, what's it going to be? Mm. She said, oh, I'm going to represent Japan. Mm-hmm. Fam, she said, her own words, she said her black card got stripped. As soon as she said she's not doing the USA, she's doing Japan, done. Mm. Bro, she got so much hate from uh, US people. Even though she's been repping Japan her whole career. And I was thinking, supporters of athletics in all forms and sports yeah. are yeah. so entitled, yeah. it makes me sick. Yeah. They actually think athletes are property. Yeah. Same way with the Euros. I was just about to compare it to the Euros. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, why yeah, I yeah. brought the whole thing up. Okay. Exactly the same as the Euros. Yeah. They think people are their property. Yeah. And when their property is not doing as it's told... Done with you. Done with You're you, useless bro. to me. Done with you. Bro, it's she crazy. said she got... Soon as she said she's repping Japan, they were like, get fucked. Like, you're not even black. Go. Go away. Like, we have no interest in you. <sighs> hey, like, big man, I've been repping Japan from day. No one had an issue. Until you're looking for who's the best person to represent you in the Olympics, mm. and I'm number one, now you're vexed. Mm. If I was... Ranked 115th, you wouldn't give a single, single fuck. Flying fuck. You, you just wouldn't want the give medals, a single you want the accolades. fuck who I'm representing. It's um, it's a crazy world we live in, man. It's a crazy. Everyone wants to be the best, but everyone also wants to represent the person that is the best. Of course, it's a crazy world we live in, man. When you're winning, you're you're God, and you own, but you're only as God a God if you're doing justice. For the team that you're supposed to be doing mm. justice for. This is thing. Um, do you know who Ozil is? Mesut Ozil. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a footballer that used to play for Real Madrid and then Arsenal. He plays for, I think, somewhere in Turkey now. Correct me if I'm wrong. But he's a, he was a German international. He doesn't play for Germany anymore. But when he was playing and winning for Germany, he used to say, oh, when I win for Germany, or when I win, I'm German. When I'm not, I'm exiled. Or something like that. And it's like, bro. and that's the reason why he denounced playing for Germany. Yeah. Anymore. It's like, that's understandable, bro. That's fucking understandable, man. Same thing, obviously, with the Euros, like you said, mm. with Rashford, Sancho and Saka. Like, it's um, it's a tough thing to have to know that if I score, I'm a hero. If I miss, I'm, I'm a villain. Bro. I'm a fucking villain because of the colour of my skin. It's mad. It's mad, bro. It's and the thing crazy. is, it's not... The thing is, the joke of it is... Is that it's got nothing to do with the color of their skin. Mm. They would, regardless if they're black or not. Thing mm. is, people focus on the racing, which obviously is the main focus. Mm-hmm. But for ignorant cunts, that's just the easiest thing to Easy, say. Yeah, yeah, it's the easiest thing to pick on. Because if it was Kane that missed, yeah. if everyone else scored and Harry Kane missed, he would be getting exactly the same amount of hate. Mm. Obviously, they wouldn't be calling him white this or white that, mm. but they would find something mm. to make him feel like the scum of the fucking earth mm. if he was the sole reason why we lost. Mm. But obviously, if you're black, it's easy. It's easier. It's easier, bro. You're a monkey. It's easy. Mm. But obviously, the race, I'm not trying to diminish the fact that they were racially abused. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just saying athletes as a whole, mm. as an entire unity, athletes are, as a whole get treated like shit. When they're not winning. Yeah. They get treated like absolute shit. Um, even when they are winning. Same thing with Anthony Joshua. Mm-hmm. He came out long, long, long ago and said, big man, these times I'm trying to rep Nigeria. Mm. Because these dons in the UK, they do not check for me, bro. Yeah. I've done nothing wrong. Yeah. And all I get is hate. Yeah. Hate, bro. All I get is hate. Like, I, I, I might as well just say I'm Nigerian from now on. Mm. And say, fuck Britain. Britain especially, bro. We're the worst for it. Yeah. We are the fucking worst for yeah, it, bro. Agreed. Agreed, bro. We are the worst. Agreed. The same man that were <clears throat> that were racially abusing, like back in the day, probably like two, three years ago, racially abusing Sterling are the same man that cheered for him because he scored the first three goals in the tournament. Yeah. For for the, for England. They were the same man that were cheering him. Yeah, yeah. Same with the papers like the Sun or Daily Mail. It's just Bro, he's not human. He's property. <laughs> he's property, man. He's English property, bro. Same thing with Andy Murray. He's Scottish. When he's losing, he's Scottish. He's Scottish. When he's win- when he's British. It, it, oh. It's Disgusting, bro. Crazy, bro. Crazy. This is a game, you know. It's actually a game. It literally, is a game. It's a game, and the game ain't for us. Mm. We are privileged to watch it. Mm. They're the one playing it. It's their game. It's these eleven man versus these eleven man. Mm. It's their thing. Mm. We have nothing to do with it, but we're so entitled. That's the word. Too we're entitled. so entitled. Too we entitled. own this game, and we own you, man. 
And we need bragging rights for con- against countries that we're never going to visit. Mm. We need bragging rights is coming home. Home. Like, we ain't seen the thing. <laughs> we ain't seen the thing since the 60s. Home. <sighs> Bro. Livid. It's a, it's a crazy world we live in, man. It is a crazy world and I hate it. It is. And I think, I think you've said this before. On here, but I can't, obviously can't remember which episode. The only way we can tackle this kind of problem in terms of um, like this racial status quo is if, or is once everyone mixes with everyone. Like there's interracial couples and relationships oh, everywhere. Everyone's brown. Everyone's, that's the only everyone's way it can brown. pattern. Everyone's you know? brown. Yeah, everyone's brown. That's the only way shit can pattern. Yeah, it's true, bro. Because the diversity that we're living in at the moment, I think it's, I don't think it's at its peak. But it's bubbling. It's there, you know? It's there. So I feel like once everyone just starts integrating with everyone. And obviously, I don't, when I say interracial, I don't just mean black versus white or black and white. Because that's, I think that's the most common interracial kind of thing you think of. When yeah, you think yeah, interracial, yeah, black yeah, and white. yeah, 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 yeah. Interracial can mean fucking Japanese and Chinese. You know, yeah, it's two yeah, different races. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but in that context, I feel like that's the only way people can actually just be like, okay, cool. He's, he's one of us. Yeah. And then regardless, win or lose. He's still one of us, you know? Mm. Thing is as well, though, like, <clears throat> the dread thing is about it is that what I think what a lot of people miss sometimes is that you are right in that once everyone's brown, there should, there'll be no more, like, racism. But there'll always be tribalism. And racism is just an extended version of tribalism. Explain. People, so it's our human nature to, to have cliques. We yes. need to feel like it's in our DNA that we need to feel like we belong to yes. somewhere. Yes, agreed, agreed. And agreed. this is our clique and other people are an issue. Agreed. I know what you mean, rather. Other countries are an issue. Other races, races are an issue. Like <clears throat> there's the workers and the bosses. There's yeah. this and there's that. Yeah. There's left and there's right. Yeah. And we need literally tribalism. Mm-hmm. Like that's basically what the Olympics is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's these tribes, all the tribes come together and, and go against each other. Mm-hmm. And you support your tribe and fuck everyone else. Mm-hmm. Fuck everyone else. Um, and you'll only support the tribes that belong to you. So mm-hmm. even, you even find, I even find myself doing it. When I was watching the opening ceremony, I was watching all these countries come out. Mm-hmm. Bro, Great Britain, let's go. Mm-hmm. Trinidad, let's go. Mm-hmm. Grenada, let's go. Mm-hmm. All you man come. Ireland, let's go. Mm-hmm. All these men are cool. The mm. rest of these men can fucking do one. Mm. Like, we, they need to get smacked up. Mm, mm, and even mm, to the mm. point where you're watching something, and the was watching the skateboarding the other day. Yeah. You've got, I had USA, France, Italy, uh, USA, France, Italy, and Peru. Mm-hmm. Um, USA, France, Italy, Peru, and Brazil. Mm-hmm. They were in the finals. Mm-hmm. The closest tribe out of all of them to me is USA. Mm-hmm. I mean, Team USA. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Team USA. You need to feel among. You need, you need to, to feel yeah. among. You, you need, need to, to feel. Click. You need to yeah. belong to somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah In yeah, something. Yeah. In everything. Yeah. So even if the, I, f- I feel like even Rick and Morty did it best when um, they had the race wars from the spiral nipples to the cone nipples. Do you remember? Yes, 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 yes. When they, when um, when Rick was doing his thing with the with planet, the, with the planet. Yeah, world. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, I remember yeah, that episode. Yeah. Yes, I remember that episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it will always come down to that. Yeah. And you, summer and summer and more, he had normal nipples and didn't feel amongst it. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yeah. I you got, And they were having proper race wars versus yeah. the type of nipple that they had. Yeah. Bro, you go to India, you've got dark skin versus light skin. They're mm. all fucking Indian. Mm. No one gives a shit. Mm. When they come over to England, I don't see who's light skin and who's dark skin. You're mm. either Indian or you're not. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter to me. But if you go over there, they find their way to, to separate castes. Yeah. They find their way to do these things. It's always going to happen. Mm. Even when the whole world's brown, people are always going to be tribalists and they're going to find a way to, to find a click and fuck everything else. Yeah. So racism may diminish, but they'll find something else, mm. which is just human nature. Um, but obviously I'm not excusing racism, but I'm just saying I don't think separation will ever stop. I hear you, bro. I don't think it will ever stop. I hear you, man. I think people will always find a way to fuck off someone else. It's an excuse at the end of the day. Hmm. It is, man. That's, 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 is. You have the middle class, the working class, the upper class. Like you've yeah. got everything. All these things is like when you actually break it down, all of these things are just tribes. Yeah. All of them are tribes. 
oh, I connect with this person because we have similar interests. We, we grew up in similar environments and stuff mm. like that. Tribes. Mm. Like you don't feel comfortable in someone else's tribe. That's basically what it boils down to. Because yeah. when you think about it, like say if you're looking for a partner, you're like, oh, we have similar, similar values and all this stuff. And like, like your parents, like, oh, my mom will be so happy if I got with a Nigerian. Mm. But if I don't get with a Nigerian, she'll be content if I got with someone who's from Ghana. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Tribes. Yeah, 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 I can't yeah, bring yeah. another white girl. That's a yeah. different tribe, yeah. fam. That can't run. Yeah, I know what you mean. Everything. It boils, always boils down to something. Yeah. And um, people don't like examine it on a day-to-day basis. You wouldn't. Mm. But it'll always, it will always come down to something. Mm. Always. Speaking of what you just said about my parents and stuff. Well, not specifically my parents, but I know what you meant. Um, that's one of the main reasons why I'm happy the way I am in terms of obviously spoken about in the previous episode about like religion and stuff about how my parents were like cultivating that that's all they knew. And obviously my whole family is more, my whole immediate family is Muslim ETC and their parents were Muslim and blah, 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 so on and so forth. I'm happy that I've kind of broken the cycle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even though it's hard for me yeah, because yeah. people don't, people don't necessarily know that I think about, I obviously want my parents to be happy and I also want my parents to be proud of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I also want to live my own life and my own truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also hard to, it's hard to do both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they brought me into this world and I know they always want the best for me and they always try and advise me for them to, they always advise me so they can be sure that I'm doing the best for myself. But if I do something that's not within their realm of comprehension, they think it's a negative thing. Yeah, of course. But it's also hard to just try and tell them like, big man, you've lived your life. This is me, you know? This is me. I'm not one trying to... If I get married to someone that's not Nigerian or not Ghanaian or not black even, it's my marriage, big man. Do you want me to be happy or do you want you to be happy? Yeah. You know? Exactly. And it's what hard. is And what is even you being happy? What does that even what it, mean? What does it equate to? What does your happiness in this situation mean? Because once the wedding's over, you don't give a fuck anymore. You literally don't give a fuck anymore. It's all show and tell. That's it's all it show is. and tell. You just want to tell your brethren. Once your brethren have been told, you forget. You I, will I have forgotten. I guarantee you my parents, don't, my parents don't remember my sister's wedding. In terms of like who, who was there. Yeah, yeah, they, don't, yeah, yeah. they don't know. Yeah, they were yeah. just there for... Obviously, they weren't there for the facade of it. But yes, they were, it was... It was just one of them ones where she was. They were proud. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, once it's... I remember it, obviously. But when it's, once it's done, it's done. Bro. And it's just like, it's a tough world we live in, man. It's a tough world we live in, but it also, it just shows how older generations have passed things down onto younger generations and the younger generations that adapt that and continue to think of that old mentality will force that onto their kids. Whereas people like me, for example, that have broken out of that cycle, I'm happy I've broken out of that cycle, but it's also hard to live my truth knowing how much I still want to, not necessarily impress, but make my parents proud. Exactly. And you want to make your parents proud. And on top of that, you also have situations in which, when you say like it's trickled down. Mm. So obviously this is trickled down from your parents. So you decide, I want to be an, I don't want to be an outlier, but it's just who I am. Mm. So you step out to the side. But then, so, so if we step back to the tribalism thing again, you got all these Nigerians. Yeah. All of them moved to UK. So we've got the Nigerian tribe and they all have kids. Yeah. All of these kids are British. Yeah. And then you've got... That's one thing they forget. That's exactly. one thing they fucking forget. <laughs> they I do. didn't ask to be born here, big man. You know? <laughs> yeah, they yeah, forget yeah. that I'm born in this multiple... multi. What's the word? Multiple, multicultural. Multicultural melting pot. They yeah. forget that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But sorry, continue. No, you, you, it's true, bro. They do forget. So they have all of these... They take all their Nigerian values... And it's not just Nigeria, it's yeah, Caribbean, it's Irish, it's everything. Mean, but, but use that yeah, as an example. Use an example. They come mean. from Nigeria. Yeah. They bring all their Nigerian values to England. Yeah. They have a Nigerian society. They have yeah. a Muslim society, a Catholic society, a Christian society, whatever. And they have kids. And they instill with those kids all of their values. Those kids are British and they grow up British, but they have Nigerian values. People like you step out to the side and you guys are the outliers. But you relate so much to being a like second generation Nigerian mm-hmm. that you make friends with all the other second generation no, Nigerians. Nigerians of course because you feel among you feel like you feel you're among. home of course tribe. You feel this is your tribe home, yeah. this is your fucking tribe yeah 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 all yeah. of them agreed, man agreed, agreed, uh, you agreed, man agreed. can boss joke about oh mum where can I put my shoes put them on my head all of this shit that you yeah. and Jacob fucking didn't even know each other yeah all your lives and you you say sentence for sentence the same, same shit same shit so you have all of this but then 
what makes it worse is that you, when you come out of it and you do a thing with a white girl or an Asian girl or whatever, mm. you get pressure from your parents that that's outside of the tribe and that's negative. Mm. You need to hope that this group of second generation Nigerians are also outliers, mm. which sometimes they're not. Of course not. Sometimes they're not. And then you get stick, probably not from the guys, but definitely from the girls. 100%. You only like white girls mm. because they have Nigerian values mm. and they're all about this tribe thing as well. Mm. So you're an outlier. So you're getting negative from here and negative from here, which just ruins everything. Yeah. And it's just unnecessary pressure yeah. for, for whatever reasons. And then you've got a couple of your boys that are like, whatever yeah like they're like you yeah and obviously i've met some of your boys and stuff like that they are is literally exactly like you yeah and it's just like why should i have so much pressure just to live my life yeah it's why should my I, life i shouldn't ever have to take into consideration someone's skin color uh racial beliefs or upbringing into the kind of person that i want to spend time with yeah or spend my life with yeah or think about i can do a thing with this girl i can even live with this girl but it's long if I want to marry you. Yeah. It's just long to the point where you might even be put off marrying them mm. because you're like, I just don't want to deal with the hassle. Mm. So what is that? What literally is that? It's long. Literal definition, bro. It's actually long. And, the, and a lot of the time, the only way you can get out of it is to double down on being an outlier mm. and said, fuck off. Like I'm going to do what I want. Mm. You have a kid with a white girl. You then have black kids who have such a disconnect from their Nigerian heritage mm. because their Nigerian heritage is so stuck in their old ways mm. that you don't even want to expose them to that. Yeah. So all they know is the other side. And all they know is the other side. And then you're disappointed that your kids know fuck, fuck all about, about their about heritage. Culture, yeah. It's, um, it's a backward cycle, mum. It's long, fam. Mm. Mm. It's long, bro. It's actually long. Wow. That took a turn. It did take a time. Well, sorry, reality. That's a no, bit no, dark. don't be sorry because reality purely because it's not. This is not the first time I've thought about things like this. You know, I think about mm. this not more often than not, but it pops into my mind. You know, yeah, because I've, I think I don't know if I've said it on here, but I probably definitely said it to you that I'm probably not going to marry a Nigerian. Oh yeah, of course you, you said know? it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, what's next? You know, yeah, where yeah. do I go from here? You yeah, know? Yeah, 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 it's hard because everything you've just said is my reality. It's long, dude. It's my reality, brother. And it's tough. It's tough, bro. Especially, especially, as I said in previous episode, I've got an example like my sister. Mm, 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 because mm, that's mm. what my parents double down on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's the golden child. She's the golden child. She's a Muslim, married a Muslim, married a Nigerian Muslim. Yeah, yeah, And they've yeah. got a kid together. They've, they've done everything the way they would have wanted to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I.e. my parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I... In their eyes, I'm just an outsider. Even yeah, though yeah. they know I'm not. Yeah. But if we're speaking figuratively, yeah, yeah, your yeah. boy's an outsider. And it hurts, bro. It's bro, tough. You're breaking my heart. It's tough, my G. All jokes aside, you're literally breaking my heart. It's tough, my G. I think about this more often than not. It's hard. Life is hard, bro. Life is hard when ancestors and Asian beliefs and ancient religions and things like that get passed on and you as a man don't accept it or you as a woman don't accept that and you try to live your own truth and your own life, it's, oh, it's just tough, bro. Yeah, because you, you, you come against resistance. <sighs> you come against resistance. And like you said, like, especially like you as a person, you don't like disappointing people. I try not to. Yeah, you intentionally try not to disappoint people. So then you get yourself stressed about the life choices you're making, which will then trickle down into your relationships because... Similar to what you've had in a relationship in the past that obviously we won't go into details for, mm. but both of you came from that environment mm. separately mm. and you both came to it like, where is this even going to go? Mm. Where can, we can't get married. Mm. Where is this actually going to go? Mm. Because our, these sides aren't going to marry up. Mm. So we might as well lock it now. Mm. That should never be the case. It should never, ever, ever be the case, but this is the world we live in, my G. And it's tough because, yes, this is the world we live in, but it makes it seem as if my parents are making my choices for me. Oh, yeah. Big man, I'm 30 years old. Bro, I hear you, bro. I'm a full-fledged adult. Bro, I'm with you. But yeah, man. But it does trickle down, bro. Even, it even trickles down further than, not even further than that, but you have examples like myself. This is nowhere near, I'm not even trying to compare it to you, mm. but like subconscious choices that I make in my life. Mm. Like I knew when I was in, Year seven. Year seven. Mm. 
that I didn't want to have a baby with a white girl. Okay. Because I didn't want my kids to be white. Okay. I'd not even think about stuff like that back then. Jesus. Bro. Oh, wow. That's what I used to think about. Oh, wow. Because, because I thought about it in a terms of just in terms, like, like I said, obviously you wouldn't think about stuff like that. But because I know I'm one kid away from there being no black anymore. Yeah, okay. And I'm, yeah. So like I knew from when I was younger, like I enjoyed being mixed race. Mm. So it's not like I wanted to take the brown and turn it back into black, mm. but I just wanted to be there more of me. Mm. And um, when I was younger, I was just like, I don't think I can have a baby with a white girl mm. because then I'm going to have like a white baby. Mm. And if that baby has a baby with a white girl or a white guy, that's it. That's it. Mm. Duncans aren't black anymore. Mm. Literally, Duncans won't be black anymore. Mm. No offense to my brother. I know he's having a baby with a white girl. Mm. I know for a fact he is. <laughs> mm. um, if he ever has a baby, I don't think my kid, brother even wants kids. But um, like I knew out of all my family, if anyone's... Keeping that alive. Uh, keeping the is black it, in there. In there, it's going to be me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly so I've known you. since I was a kid. Yeah. That like there's pressure on me. Yeah. For this family to stay black. Yeah. Because it's it's a it's a hop a skip and a jump away from not being black anymore. Yeah. Now that's it. <sighs> we got deep, man. Bro, it got deep quick. Yeah, yeah. It actually got deep quick. Yeah, man. Out of nowhere, I don't even think we can do a muddy asshole. I don't think not so. under these circumstances. <laughs> No, under these, no, circumstances. these circumstances, gee, I don't think we can. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I think we might have to just wrap it up yeah, there. Yeah, man, let's wrap it up, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we love you guys. We do, thank you, for, if you. If you managed to make it this far, bro, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we'll see you in a couple of days. We'll see you in a couple of days. Yeah. Love, bless. Bye.